Hello and welcome, I'm Omidus and today we will react to the top 10 decade defining music videos of the 2010s so far. Uh, the thumbnail is Daft Punk with Pharrell Williams, Get Lucky, which isn't really a, a special music video, you, you know, it's just them jamming out on a great track with Pharrell and them in shiny suits, that's all that it is, reacted, you know. I don't, I don't mind it, you know, I love Daft Punk, but it's not one of the best music videos of that decade, but I mean, it's a 2010, so there's not a lot to choose. Uh, the slideshow is Uptown Funk, you know, when you ho hover over the videos, um, Uptown Funk by Bruno Mars and some other blokes that nobody gives a shit about. Mark Ronson or something, I don't fucking know. Um, yeah, I don't really have any uh, predictions because I'm not really a music video guy, uh, let alone for the 2010. So I cannot guess anything, but if I do see it, I'll probably recognize it though. So let, let's just get into it. I mean, I really should check out the premium shit because on every video you get an ad nowadays, it's just so terrible. I'm probably not gonna do it though because money, but still. Fancy. But it's, it's getting more convincing and convincing every time you are on YouTube because you're just loaded with ads, it's just terrible. Oh, it is. Yeah. Uh, Trip Shop. Yeah, that one is funny. Kendrick Lamar. I mean, they're all just kind of generic to me, you know, just kind of cruising with their, with, with their, you know, rich ass, expensive ass cars, you know, them just cruising. It's not really anything special, I think. Oh, uh, gotcha. Yeah. This should be on there because it is quite a unique video. You know, if you look at every video so far you've seen a little bit of, then all of them, you know, they were just cruising in their expensive cars, just doing their thing. And Gorcha is actually going out of the ordinary, which is that generic shit. And he's actually making a kind of special paint video. He's a one-hit wonder though, but what a hit it was though. Oh, Rihanna. Video per act is allowed. No. Please, no. Yeah. No shit. Oh, they didn't do the hand club. That was kind of cringy. Uh, Uptown Funk by Bruno Mars. Number 10. I should probably stop with those hand flaps though, because it's getting really autistic. I mean, featuring Bruno Mars. He he is the fucking track. He defines the track. How is he featured on this? Yeah, Mark Ronson produced it, but it's not your track. It's Bruno's track. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Not really. I mean, it's just like an 80s throwback kind of vibe. It's not from another world, it's from another decade, more precisely. He doesn't do anything though. Cool. Yeah, I've been doing it, but... I mean, I did expect Bruno Mars to be a bit higher though, but it's, it's still fair. I mean, if the list is gonna be that good though, you know, if you have Bruno Mars in number 10, then it should be a pretty good list. Uh, Happy Pharrell Williams. Uh, yeah, these two artists, I don't mind them. But they're kind of... Well, you know, I like Bruno Mars. 
like Pharrell Williams too. So they're both artists that I like, but I don't, I don't love them, but I still like them. You cannot escape the song though, whenever it was released. Yeah, I want to break from this fucking song. Or you're called Sound of Ominous, who is very hard to please. Fucking dipshit. I mean, I'm not smiling through this song because it's kind of generic to me and I've heard it way too much. Oh shit, let's skip forward. A little bit by the end of our next video, as the song Sing Along Lyrics is built around everyday people with some celeb cameos dancing. I already saw Sia, which I don't mind. What's not to like? It's just kind of bland to me. There's not anything to hate or something, but. Eh, just average. The official edit is made up of various moments taken from a mammoth 24 hour version of the. I mean, it's just people spazzing out about an overplayed song. Like, why should you care? It's infectious as hell, though. I mean, if it does get played or something, I don't mind it, but, nah, you know, if I don't hear it ever again, wouldn't mind it. Wouldn't mind either, too. Uh, number eight, I believe I saw Rihanna, which does fall into the same category as I don't mind her as the first two too. I do like some of her songs, but she does go downhill with every year. I think you know she started out decently. I guess she did kind of be you know in the 2010s early. She was pretty good, you know with. Um, well, I, I cannot name the song, but if I hear it, I know it. Those songs are, I do kind of like. Um, a Rude Boy, I like that song. Uh, I, I do like this song too, though. I do like this one. Yeah, you know, I do like that, uh, whatever that is, you know, that keyboard playing, I guess. I do like it, though. Number eight, we found love. Yeah, you know, with Calvin Harris, I don't mind him. I do like this song, I do like it. One of the most controversial music videos of its time. We found love with shots in Ireland and boasts a typical Is this Calvin Harris in the music video? That that's what I'm wondering. British Actually that was Chris Brown, but luckily it isn't him. I do like the music video too where they're just kinda like being romantic in a snack bar. It's pretty funny. Who also reportedly advised Rihanna to be acquainted with God after offense was taken over the singer's significant state of undress. That's also good produced, I think. The song sounds fresh. It is, you know, has good production on it. Rihanna has really clean, crystal clean vocals, you know. I don't like it. It's a good song. Which you guys probably don't expect since. I'm pretty mixed on Rihanna as a whole because of her later stuff, but even then she had uh, four or five seconds. I, I really like that song, you know, with Kanye West and Paul McCartney of all people. So Rihanna and Paul McCartney, that's really unique. And, you know, throw Kanye Wanker in there too. No, I do like it. You know, it gets kind of boring to me after a while, but, you know, it's nice to hear Every once in a while, so there we go. Oh yeah, speaking of the wanker, Runaway. Yeah, I love this song, man. I mean, as a whole, I kind of dislike Kanye West, but I do think this is a great song. Seven, Runaway, Kanye West featuring Pusha T. Arguably his best one. Where it's just kind of bashing and kind of, you know, uh, flipping off the haters and the critics, like... Well, there's a lyric in there about them, I don't know it. Yeah, you know where they just say, no, mama, mama, you know, that all over again. 
I really hate the repetition of rap like that, you know, where they just have one beat or something where you hear like, hey, hey, you know, or mama, 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 you know, that, where, you know, you have like a stuttering kind of toddler bitch or something that repeats that thing over and over again. It just gets really annoying for, to me. For Runaway, there are very few videos ever to match this effort in terms of scope. Let alone during just the 2010s. Oh uh, yeah, let's have a toast for the douchebags. Let's, ha let's have a toast for the assholes. Kind of saying, you know, the haters and the critics. A toast for the let's have a toast for the assholes. Oh, that was kind of cringe. Yeah. I have no idea what's happening. I mean, that's Rooster Chick, whoever he's dating. This music video is fucking weird, but I do like the song. I do like it more when he is singing. Yes, uh, I do think he has a decent singing voice. And whenever he does that, I do think it's good, it's nice. This Rooster chick is really fucking weird though. Get his shit away. Uh, speaking of shit, well, it's not terrible, but it's just, you know, you know, it's basically like the first three picks. It's just kind of cheesy, it's just kind of, you know, meh, it's mediocre. I don't hate Katy Perry or Snoop Dogg for that matter. But I do, do think both of them do kind of dip in, did decline in quality after uh, their first couple of albums. Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg after his first album, because everything after Doggy Style is just fucking garbage. And, uh, but he just keeps going. I mean, good, good for him, man, good for him. Katy Perry, I, I do think her first two albums are decent, but I think the rest of her discography is really lackluster. Number six. I mean, I do want to like this, but it's just way too cheesy and just way too... I don't know, you know, just something about Katy Perry doesn't speak to me. Like her kind of kinky, trying to be sexy, like sex symbol or something. I don't like that. You know, Madonna did it, I hated it. Lady Gaga kind of did it. Didn't mind it, honestly. But she didn't overdo it, she just showed it a little bit. And I think Katy Perry, she kind of falls under the Madonna category while being, you know... I don't want to say less sexy because Madonna isn't that old. But she uh, pulls it off less well. Let's say let's say that. In this Katy Perry decade definer, the US state of California is affectionately, nay, unaffectionately rebranded as the sweeter side. And then her being naked on this cloud like of course she thought about it, probably. Or one of her dirty producers. Put on some fucking clothes, man. That Snoop Dogg feature is so unnecessary. Like this song doesn't need any balls, it's a girl's anthem. Like fuck all with your Snoop Dogg. But Snoop Dogg is accurate though, since Snoop and you know Candy World and stuff like that. Never actually thought about it like that, but that's that's maybe how they came up with it. So, and then the how's it called the the cream, the cream cone titties, you know, however you call them, the cream can titties, like fucking all. Uh, Sia Chandelier. I don't like Sia, but I don't hate her. So. Basically, this whole list speaks to me as don't hate it, but don't, don't li <laughs> fucking hell, man. Don't hate it, but don't love it either. So it's kind of like in that gray middle area. All, everything so far has been pretty average. Even Runaway is just, yeah, Runaway is probably the best track so far, in my opinion. But it's by Kanye West, so. You know, the track is good, but it's by an annoying ass guy, so it kind of becomes average again, if you know what I mean. Auto tune, auto tune, auto four. Stand up 
One, two, three, one, two, three, drink. <laughs> I mean, that line is kind of funny because she has kind of, you know, throwing a generic lyric in there for the party anthem. But she's not giving a fuck about the lyrics. She's saying it such, in such a monologue kind of tone. That's probably what she means with that line right there. You know, you gotta create a party anthem, but I'm not a party person. So she's saying it really like de depressed in a way. If, if that is the message, I do really like that, but it's still a generic party anthem lyric, so. It's kind of take it or leave it. Should I make this comedy? Yeah, I'm gonna make it, fuck it. Uh, and I do prefer that song a hell of a lot more, if you know what I mean. Maddie Ziegler might have been a household name for anybody watching the reality TV show Dance Moms, but for anyone else, this unbelievable routine is likely the first I mean, I have more respect for it, since my fans actually, uh, I believe Blackwing kind of like she, uh, and I do, I do think that she has a good songwriter, but I just don't like her music. I've never really a good Sia song. I don't like the autotune to it, it just sounds really robotic. It's kind of the point, I guess, but... It's I mean, it's basically just, uh, like what Jamojo said, it's basically just like a little girl in like this, uh, how do you say that, beige outfit. So she looks naked, but she isn't. She's like a minor or something, so... I mean, for, for Her Herbert the Pervert or something, this would be perfect for him, but... Doesn't really speak to me, you know, it's just like a little girl dancing in a really reve revealing outfit, dancing in just a regular ass room. Doesn't really speak to me, but it's a mo motivational song, you know, it does help people to support them. Good for you, good for the people that, you know, get the song, but I don't. Well, to stop watching, as Ziegler performs with an emotional range and maturity way beyond her 11 years at the time of filming. Yeah, 11, there we go. There were also people, I believe, that thought that was Sia, but I believe Sia is like 40 years old, so no. And the fi I don't like this final lyric too, like, we're out for the night, out for the night. I really hate it. Well, I don't hate it, but I just really dislike that. It just sounds really bad. Uh, gotcha, used. How do you. How's the song called? Um, somebody that I used to know? Yeah, there we go. I haven't heard this song in forever. Four. But this song was everywhere whenever it did drop. Somebody that I used to know. Gautier featuring Kimbra. Probably together with Stay Me by Aha, one of the best One in Wonder songs, in my opinion. In terms of instantly recognizable music videos of the 2010s, this is probably the best example. You can be addicted to a certain kind of sadness. I mean, you don't get a pop song anymore with those lyrics. You really don't. This was really special. Overplayed as fuck, but it was special. It was probably a bitch to get all the scholars right though, man. Skin Very powerful vocals. But there was a huge amount of work needed to nail this. It almost took 24 hours to body paint Gautier and Kimbra, but as they say, genius takes time. 24 hours, that's relatively short. I, I thought it was way longer. And then her getting naked. Oh my god, no. Um, blurred lines. I mean, this is basically a soft porn. How is this a decade definer? It's basically a fucking porn video. Tick. Fuck you, Robin Tick. Fucking asshole. Blurred lines. Robin Thick featuring Ti and Number three. No. Hey, go come here. Fuck this voice. I mean, if Pharrell Williams had more of a role in this, I, I probably would would like it more because I do like him. But he only said, woo, woo, you know, he only yells on the track. So everything that he does, I think, yeah. 
Does he have a solo line? I don't think so. Such a wasted performance by, well, one good artist in my opinion. By having naked chicks in your music video, it defines it. Yeah, sure, much Mojo. It's a wide backdrop with naked chicks dancing in front of a douchebag. How is that decade defining? That's just a scumbag video. Fucking atrocity. <sighs> Fucking hell. Um, oh my god, Wrecking Ball by Mojo. I mean, it is decade defining, I guess, but... It's another kind of like nudity song, which I don't give a fuck about. Two. Oh, look at that forced tear down my eye. Oh, I'm so emotional. Miley Cyrus. I mean, if you're starting out with a tear like that, you have to kind of build that up. So the people know why you are upset. She immediately starts off with a tear down her eye. Why the fuck are you sad? We don't know. You didn't explain it. I don't think throughout the whole video, because throughout the whole video you are on a wrecking ball, wrecking the shit up. Why are you sad though? It's probably metaphorically speaking, but she's just being very vague in this one. If not in everything. Fucking hell man. Don't lick the hammer. Put on some fucking clothes, mate. Doesn't this break YouTube guidelines or something? Like, all nudity isn't appropriate. They're both pretty bad though, in my opinion. I mean, but at least Miley is doing something in this video. Shinao Connor was just basically up in your face and saying, Nothing compares to you. Nothing ever did reach this amount of success again. Yeah, but we don't want you. I mean, at least she doesn't use autotune on this one. At least. It's kind of clean, but I don't like it. So this is probably the first, yeah, it's probably the first bad song in my opinion. And I'm probably gonna close over the bad song too. Oh no no, the, the, the thumbnail, yeah, there we go. The thumbnail is easily the best thing ever to this decade. Yeah, I will probably use for the thumbnail. I mean, it's the only good thing on here, so there we go. Shake it off with Taylor Swift. I mean, saying that, uh, you know, Daft Punk, you know, they, they cannot make music for eight years and whenever they do make a splash again onto the scene, they're easily the best goddamn thing ever. So, that just shows the quality of Daft Punk, man. Rock on. Daft Punk is electronic. Fuck you. Rock on. Bangarang, Skrillex featuring Sarah. Uh, Anaconda, Nicki Minaj. Uh, Turf Show by Macklemore, Ryan Lewis featuring Juan. So yeah, this should have been on the list, in my opinion. Telephone, Lady Gaga featuring Beyonce, which doesn't really count because it's from the, you know, it's from 2009, I believe, but, you know, I guess, I guess. It's a good song. Should have been on the list. It's kind of too naked for my taste, but you know, she still wears clothes. <coughs> my desires. Fancy by Iggy Azalea featuring Charlie XCX. Hey, hey, hey. I fucking hate that. You know, the, the, the constant haze or something. Just stop that. I hate that. Let's go to number one already.
Wait, so Get Lucky isn't even on the list, but it's still the thumbnail of the video. Like, what the fuck? Oh my god, sigh, really? Sigh. I mean, I guess, I guess. Didn't not think about it, though. I mean, I do prefer this over Despacito's most viewed video because Despacito is just kind of like a generic Spanish anthem, which you know you already have thousands of. And I mean, Sai was kind of like a unique kind of Korean dancer, which I actually prefer because it's just such a weird video. And I do think it really deserves it because it's so worldwide appealing. And Despacito, of course, you know, uh, reaches above Gangnam Style, which is really disappointing because Despacito is just generic as fuck. Whereas this is actually kind of unique. You know, musically wise, not really, but the music video is really unique though. Where Despacito is just groping some women in really weird ways. All previous world records and established itself as the defining video of its time. Size balance between suiting up and getting down took the whole world by storm. So put your bow tie on and go bananas because sometimes it's just the best possible idea. Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Whoop, 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 whoop. Cool. I won't say that dirge, but let's not do that. Hey, that is a clever one. Everything I say is so relevant. 69, I see what you did there. I'm probably gonna use Death Punk 2 for the terminal. Like, why not have that on there? Like, yeah, sure, the music video is kind of bland, but just have it on there. It's a great song. But I mean, yeah, fuck with Mojo. <laughs> yeah, you know, the like the number one, it is quite fitting. So let's check out the comments for a bit. Can totally see the music video being highly regarded as works of pop culture, art of 20. 2014, similar to see how we see 70s, 80s music videos now. Where's Party Rock Anthem garbage? Can we just let bl Blurred Lines die? Thank you. If only. I know, right? Just let it die. Exactly. Just fuck that noise. Uh, which one should make a top 10 most overplayed song list? Happily will surely be number one. Oh, ha yeah, happy for sure. Arctic Monkeys, do I want to know? Uh, masterpiece, no. Unique in, in itself. It is a unique, but it's, it's not a masterpiece. This generation sucks. The 2010s suck in the music department. Guys, chill. We still have five years to go. Uh, okay. Yeah, but it will suck eventually too, so no problem. What, what, what you are missing? Your thumbnail, get lucky by Daft Punk? Exactly. It's not really a, a good music video though, but it's a great song. I smell clickbait. They're, they were simply controversial, especially Blurred Lines. How does anyone mispronounce Gangnam Style? Uh, it's legit in the chorus. H how he says it, it's it, it's how it's pronounced in Korea. That's fair. I mean, Watch Mojo fucks up everything, so there we go. I miss a lot. Uh, Coldplay Paradise, Adele Hello, which wasn't released back then, I believe. Crystallize, Lindsay Sterling, and uh, After Ever After Paint. Never heard of those uh, last two. Glad we found Lovers on there, best music video ever. It's good, but it's not that good. But Beyonce won on the best music video of all time. <laughs> I love We Love the Breath 6. It's so overplayed, but I mean, got a lot of back on. I Hate Happy. It's a detestable, boring song. Yeah, I do. I do think that, I do think that too. Gunnam Style is nice though, and it's kind of generic. Childish Gambina, 2005. Rolling in the Deep and Call Me Maybe are missing. Yeah, those two should, should be on the list in my opinion. 
rolling in the DPS call maybe no. Yeah, probably. But other like call me babe, call me maybe too does. It's kind of cute. The fact all right by Kendrick Lamar was even a mention shows this is just mainstream crap. Well, it was mentioned briefly, but not a lot. I really hope uh, I really hope rolling in the deepest here. Well, it wasn't bitch. Uh, but I'm probably gonna end it because the comment don't really speak to me. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Let me know what you want to see in the upcoming video, and I'll see you guys in the next video. God bless, safe, take care, and peace.